Well, hey guys, it's me, that guy over there, here once again. And what I'm going to be doing today is a tutorial on how to make a platformer slash shooter game in Multimedia Fusion 2. Now I'm going to be doing this in many parts because it's going to take me more than 10 minutes to make a game. And this video is going to be mostly discussing fast loops and their use. Alright, and I was requested to do this by a couple people because they saw my fall tail and they saw that running gun shooter I've been working on and they wanted me to do this so here I am I'm doing it alright so this if you make a new application which I just did it will default to 640 by 480 which honestly is kinda huge for my taste like if you play the application it's gonna be that big and I don't like big screens so I'm gonna resize that down the application properties to 480 by 320 and that's better. As you can see, I did uh, made a grid already by using these three buttons up here. You can set up however big you want the grid. You could even set it to four by four pixels, which would why would you do that? I don't even know why why you would do that. Or well, we're going to set it to 32 by 32 because that's the default for anything you create like this active. We're going to rename this collider because that's what it's going to be. And I'm going to be working really, really fast over these videos, because, honestly, ten minutes isn't that much. Like, you really think it's more than it than it is. So what I did here is I cleared the image, I filled it with green, just any solid color, but green's my favorite color. Whoops. And I set the hot spot and the action point to the middle by pressing these buttons. So that's our collider. Set it there. Alright, so fast loops you should really 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 know what they are and use them and we're going to name this application putts for tutorial and we'll save it whoops that's my shooter game and we're going to go up to examples and save it as putt again alright so we have a collider we have a frame let's make a quick backdrop object alright here. And we're going to set this in this little properties bar to 32 by 144. And that's not that's not right. 128. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so this is our wall. We're gonna name it that. Wall. And I'm going to be using this to demonstrate fast loops. We're gonna name one of this collider's active our alterable values to uh, movement stock. And with this, I'm going to be demonstrating what fast loops do. Alright. So, let's go into our event editor, this button right here. Or you can hit Control e which I never do. In fact, I didn't know you could do that until right now. We're going to add the event uh, when movement stock is greater than zero. That's its value. Whoops, actually first what you need to do is set the default to 200. When this is greater than zero and this is not overlapping a backdrop, we change it to not overlapping by right clicking and hitting negate. And that reminds me, I need to change this into the in the runtime properties to obstacle type obstacle. Pretty redundant, but you know. Alright, so when it's greater than zero and it's not overlapping that object, it's going to subtract from the movement stock one and it's going to set its x position to its own position plus one. Alright? And yeah, let's see what it does now. We start the frame, as you can see, it's moving, 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 boom. It's going to hit it, it's going to stop. Or, It'll stop when it reaches 200 pixels over. Moving, 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 boom. Reached 200, and it stopped. Now we can do that instantly using fast loops. And this is really useful, even though it might not appear to be at first. So we're going to start a loop. You go into the special event properties, fast loops, start loop, and you have to name it. So we're going to name it move. And we're going to run that. Since it has the value 200, we're going to run it 200 times. So, 
Oh, whoops. Haha, <laughs> that's wrong. We need a new event, and it's called Always. R. No, in this case, we're going to use Start of Frame. Move that event to that thing, because this would not work otherwise. So, Start of Frame is going to run that loop 200 times. And then we're going to add into this other event, On Loop. And remember, it's Move. you got to type that in. On Loop Move, when this is happening when its value is greater than zero and it's overlapping and not overlapping an object, it's going to do all this. Now, watch what happens when I start it. Boom. It's already touching the thing. I can start the frame over, like I'm doing now. It's just always going to be there. So what's happened is it's done what I did before, moved it one pixel over, over and over until it hit that object, but it did it instantly. Like it did it in all the steps but in one instant loop before you could even see it. It might be hard to understand now, but you're really going to have to use this. Because otherwise, watch, if I want it to move faster than one pixel at a time, we can delete all this, get rid of that, get rid of that. I can move it, say, six pixels over. Now watch what happens, though. See, it's six pixels into the wall now, and that's no good. Uh, how much time do I have here? fair amount of time. So that's no good. So we can go back, we can undo, undo. I'm going to start loop move six times now. And on loop move, when it's not overlapping an object, I'm going to have it, forget the movement stock thing, I'm going to have it move six pixels to the, to the right. Now watch. That didn't work. Alright, now let's change this to always, and now let's see what happens. Wow, that still didn't work. On loop move when it's not overlapping an object. Move. Okay, here we go. On loop move when it is overlapping an object. Oh, wait. Ha. Uh, let's change this to one. This is what multimedia fusion developing is, you guys, just messing up and fixing your mistakes. That's that's all it is. Say, okay, this should work. Boom. Alright, it did work. But if you don't want it to stay one pixel in to the thing, you can make it so that when it hits the object, hits the wall, it's going to go one pixel back. See, now it's right flush with the wall, but not over it. That's how you use fast loops. See, I could say like this, like, uh, eliminate that loop again. Eliminate the loop completely. Just move it six pixels to the right. When it's over the wall, move it six pixels back. This is going to be so glitchy. Or it's not going to be. Oh, well. Let's try moving this thing a little bit closer. Now let's see what it does. See, now it's like not even on the wall. It just makes for a glitchy game if you do it without fast loops. So that's what they are. And I probably used all my time talking about that. Almost. I only have uh, less than a couple more minutes. Uh, okay, so maybe that's sufficient for one video. I mean, now that you understand what fast loops are, hopefully you can do this. Uh, let me just recreate that again. Greater than zero. Not overlapping a backdrop. On loop. Move. Start a frame. Whoops. Start a frame. Start loop. Move. 200 times. Uh, position set. X position. Plus one. And subtract from movement stock. One. Alright. Boom. It also works for that. When it's done moving 200 frames, 200 pixels, it will do that. So, why does this close thing keep coming up? That's just been happening for like the last week and I can't understand it. I have less than 30 seconds until 10 minutes. Alright, so that's fast loops. I intended to make the whole gravity thing in this video too, but it took much longer to explain that than I thought. So, let's save it here. Next episode, we'll go into the actual gravity and movement, and we'll make it so you can move this guy around and control it. So I hope you're looking forward to that, and I'll see you then. Have a nice day.
and let me stop this. Here we go.